Now recognize Mr. Johnson from Ohio, five minutes. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank Chairman Guthrie for having this hearing today, and thank you to our panelists uh, for joining us here today. Uh, we're considering a number of bills and important reauthorizations here today, including the Children's Hospital's Graduate Medical Education Payment Program, which funds freestanding children's hospitals. This money helps their graduate medical education programs train resident physicians and dentists. We all understand the toll that the pandemic took on the most vulnerable in our society, particularly our children, from not being able to go to school, something we will not know the true side effects of for years to come, to masks and anxiety. COVID-19 weighed heavy on America's boys and girls. It's critical that we support our nation's children's hospitals. Nothing is more important to me than ensuring the mental and physical health of our young people. That's why I'm proud to support Representative Crenshaw's legislation reauthorizing the, uh, the graduate medical uh, uh, education payment program. Yes, I, I am deeply troubled uh, by reports that a growing consortium of American medical professionals are pushing highly controversial treatments like gender-affirming surgeries, hormone therapy, and puberty blockers on children and teenagers when we do not know the true impact of their long-term mental and physical health. So question uh, number one, uh, Dr. Grossman, in your position as a child, adolescent, and uh, uh, adult psychiatrist, what types of treatment methods for kids diagnosed with gender dysphoria are backed by scientific data? If you need me to repeat that, I will. No, 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 I, I heard you. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman, for the question. We have known for decades that if these kids are left alone or just given psychotherapy and family support, that the vast majority will uh, become comfortable with their with their sex, with being a boy or a girl. Mm -hmm. We've known that for a very long time. Recently, we've started applying so-called gender-affirming care to a new cohort, a new group of kids that we've never seen before. And those are kids who suddenly, out of the blue, develop the gender dysphoria uh, as, as part of what more and more people are realizing is a social contagion. So you're saying that you're you're saying that if they if they receive the kind of support at home and, and mental health counseling, uh, uh, traditional mental health counseling, that they they grow through this phase and they become comfortable with not, who they are. Yeah, I'm not saying every single sure. person. Sure. Sure. But in the past, the research that's been done on those kids would say so. Well, that's interesting because, you know, as my colleagues across the aisle frequently like to say, uh, we need to follow the science here. In Dr. Grossman's opening remarks, she noted that the United States is moving in the opposite direction from our European counterparts in terms of how those nations view gender dysphoria treatment. Simply look at our friends in Great Britain. Just recently, the National Health Services in London announced that publicly funded services will no longer routinely offer puberty blocking drugs to children. This on the back of a 2023 global public opinion survey of 30 countries asking whether or not transgender teens should be allowed to receive gender affirming care. This survey showed the United States as having even less public support for these treatments than virtually every single European country polled, including the UK. The fact of the matter is the United States is moving in the wrong direction. It's moving in a very extreme direction and is becoming a global outlier on this issue. I personally believe it is irresponsible and essentially child abuse to allow minors to make these types of life-changing medical decisions. But on the facts, we simply do not know enough to say for certain that we should be allowing these treatments at all. I find it disturbing that some children's hospitals are pushing puberty blockers or hormone therapies on children incapable of understanding the lifelong 
life, uh, long-term effects of these treatments. Children's hospitals are meant to be the gold standard of pediatric care in our communities, and their support for such programs will lead parents and families to trust what they are saying despite the data telling a different story. I do have other questions that I'll submit for the record, Mr. Chairman. I realize my time has expired. This is a real important and emotional issue uh, for many of us, especially those of us who are uh, uh, grounded in our faith and uh, and as parents, uh, we see this as a aberration. Gentlemen, time has expired. I yield back. I now recognize Ms. Custer.